Welcome to the League Lounge, ladies and gentlemen. And for the first episode, we have got my good mate Griffin Neem, the one of the newest members of the North Queensland Cowboys squad for 2021. How are you going, Griff? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no problem. No, cheers for hopping on. It means a lot. Um, so I know Griffin a bit already. Um, but yeah, you guys don't know Griffin probably a lot of you. So Griffin, just tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and how old you are, and all. All that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm born and raised in Greymouth, New Zealand. This town in New Zealand. Um, 19 years old. Um, and moved to Australia when I finished high school. And I think I've been here for coming up two years now. So, yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that the other day. I was trying to count down the years. How long? In two years, man, it's flown. It's flown by pretty quick. I guess it's even flown yeah, it's- even quicker for you. It's gone real fast, eh? It feels like yesterday I was just coming over. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Yeah. But, yeah, we'll, we'll go into touch on the Greymouth thing because, obviously, Greymouth, a lot of people probably don't know about Greymouth, but, obviously, that's where we're both from and small town, the west coast of the South Island, New Zealand. And um, yep. it's one of those things where, where sports-wise, you know, a lot of people in the rugby league industry have – that's been their sport from the get-go, but – in a little town, you got a lot of sports to choose from, but why, why did league stick out to you? Um, well, definitely my dad played league. So growing up, my whole childhood, he played league. I'd go watch him play league and it was, we watched league on TV. Um, I guess I just sort of moved into it, got a hold of it, played when I was younger, all us young boys at the club rooms, suburbs club rooms, just running around when we were little and then, we all started playing as mates and just grew on us. Keep playing each year and loved them more and more each year, I guess, yeah. Did you give your dad more of a rap? How good was your dad at league? Uh, he was, I feel he was pretty good. He <laughs> played, um, I think he played junior Kiwis, so that's, like, that's a big achievement. So he's definitely someone I look up to as well. So. Yeah. If I need anything, if I, definitely if I need advice, he's one of the first people I go to as well, so. He's been a big part of it. Yeah, so obviously, like you said, playing for Suburbs Rugby League Club, um, the club I played for as well, and probably the strongest club currently on the West Coast. Um, obviously, you would know, but a lot of our listeners and viewers won't realise it's kind of West Coast Rugby League. I shouldn't say it's died off, but it's looking it's not looking as strong as it used to be, which is a shame to hear. But, um, yeah, sub, Suburbs, like, do you have any... What are your best memories from playing for the suburbs? Any ones that stick out from a young age? Um, probably a big one. I remember it was probably, I think it might have been under 14, maybe under 12s actually, under 12s, when we got beaten by Marist all year. All year we got beaten. And we couldn't beat him and then it came to the grand final and we beat them like 36 nil or something. So that was... Um, I was only 12, but when yeah. I look back at it now, it was pretty cool. But um, there's definitely a lot of memories there, especially mm. the club rooms. But, um, yeah. Yeah, probably some memories that you can't share on this, but <laughs> we'll potentially get to them. Yeah, potentially get to them later. <laughs> now, nah, so obviously when you're playing rugby league younger, you're not thinking about potentially being a North Queensland Cowboy. You're doing it for the love of the game and, all, you know, just playing with your friends. But when did rugby league kind of start becoming serious for you? Um, I don't know actually I think well when I was younger it was sort of just play because I loved it and it was fun and then I guess as you got older you started doing more trainings going to more like footy camps in Christchurch and then doing that training with Paddy Burns Paddy. I guess when we started the yeah, old Paddy I guess when we started doing that it got more serious and then you move into scorpions like that and then it just is the higher you go, the more serious it gets. Yeah, so actually, yeah, that's a good lead on. So we we'll actually forgot to touch on. So what position do you play, Griff? Obviously, I know you as a, as a forward, but what have you been kind of moulded into at the Cowboys? Um, I don't think I've actually got a specific position I play, but Versus I can top. play. Yeah, I can play second row. I can play front row. Front row and 13 are pretty much the same nowadays. So it's pretty much just in the middle on the edge. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we'll touch on you touch on the Scorpions now. What I remember is um, probably when you got you know kind of 
into that NRL kind of conversation, by the you know obviously development um, side of things was you come back from West Coast tournament and yeah you got you kind of you yeah you're on the radar of a few NRL clubs. Do you want to tell us about that tournament and how like was that a surreal feeling kind of yeah, you know being noticed? Sort of, sort of come out of nowhere really. I guess we played West Coast Fifteens and then it was into Scorpions Fifteens and then we were at Nationals and. Um, then we played, it was like a week long tournament at Nationals, and then out of nowhere, on probably day four, mum and dad just come up and said they've had like five or so teams just come up to them and ask them who I am and blah blah blah. And yeah, it's all just come out of nowhere. Mum and dad ended up going to heaps of free dinners, and it was sort of, I didn't, I didn't really get my head around it at the start. And, we sort of got like a, a manager as well, and he's just sorted it for us all. Yep. And then, yeah, it was sort of just who I wanted to go with and went from there. Yeah, nice, mate. Yeah, no, I still remember that. Like, we are all there, and we heard, kind of got the, you know, the news kind of made the circles around Greymouth. It doesn't take long for it to circulate. But um, did they say why you, why you stuck out, why they were interested, anything in particular? Um. I don't know. I think they just like the way I played, or I don't. I don't know. Like it sort of. I was. I went to the tournament. I didn't expect anything to come out of it. I was just expecting to have a good tournament, and have some fun, and see what I try and make the rep team, the Zealand team, and then I don't know. They sort of just said they liked how I played, and <laughs> they wanted to sign me. Yeah. Yeah. No, fair enough. Yeah, because what I remember as just watching you younger, like I always knew you were one of the best players in your age group. You weren't a player that was going to score and run 100 metre tries and all that sorts of stuff. There's been a few players at Coast that have been able to do that. But I think what you what stuck out for you was you, you had the solids down. And you probably learned that from your dad, the tackling technique, your good hole runner. And um, yeah. yeah, and obviously your work ethic, probably something that really showed off, you know, once you got picked up from the Cowboys. So when the, basically that happened, you signed, you know, you signed or you you chose the Cowboys. What did they say to you and what was kind of the all the logistics that went with that decision? Um, so he sort of, he flew to Greymouth to sign it all. So he come oh, stayed did at he? the motel. Yeah, he came to Greymouth at all. Oh, cool. When we sorted it, he said, yeah, we'll come bring the papers. And he stayed at the motel and went out for dinner and, Sort of just had it. I think I signed a, signed a free year deal, and it was just this first year. Stay at, still at school, uh, and they do like a camp at the end of the year. Fly over to Townsville, do like a week long camp, and then go back. And then they just pray, um, like keep a, keep tabs on you through the year, see how you're going. Like have West Coast, and then you're going to Scorpions. Oh yeah, we'll see you at Scorpions tournament. Watch us play there. See if we're going alright or not, and then go back to the camp at the end of the year. And then on my last year was, so last year was my last year, my contract. So it was when I finished school, I move over. Then it's for the full time then. You just, you training every day and then you play the whole season. And lucky enough, I was able to get re-signed again. Mm. Um, yeah. And yeah, going on that, I remember as soon as you made that decision, you noticeably, I think a lot of people notice you, you you bolted up a bit, mate. You look, you're looking good. You um, did they give you kind of a program in terms of nutrition and conditioning side of things? I'm obviously I'm guessing they did, but were you yeah. um, was that was that obviously you had rugby league on your mind, but was it hard to kind of really focus in at training at such a young age, or do you think now nah, I know what I need to do? Um, that was. Well, I loved it, so it was sort of pretty easy, I guess. You know, when you're enjoying it, exactly, it's pretty easy to do it. I think it was like, I think I was when I was 16, turning 17, I put something like 15 kgs on that one year. I just went from there. The next year, I put some more on. I guess I'm still trying to put some on now. So, yeah, they're pretty good at what they they do. They know how to put weight on you, and they know how to put good weight on you. Yeah, so it's, yeah. yeah, I can vouch for that. They do. They definitely did a good job, mate. Um, so 
we'll get into <laughs> when you when you headed over to Townsville. Um, so like you said, end of high school and yeah, tell us about the obviously leaving your home, like you said, yes. born and raised in Greymouth. You know, you've only you did some sort of quick trips over to Christchurch for the South Island Scorpions, but you know, overall, you, this is the big move, moving away from your family. How was talk about the hurdles, talk about the struggles um, with that? Yeah, you know, with it definitely that was hard. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've gone to Christchurch and gone to Rotorua for like week long camps and stuff, but this was moving to a whole other country. Like you're prop, you're moving over there, so it's, it's a one way ticket. Mm. And um, I remember when I was moving, like the week before I was moving, I was so excited, like. Thought it'd be sweet, like I'm pumped as, like can't wait to get there. And then as soon as I landed, I was still pretty happy and then got to where I was staying and it just like hit me eh. Like as soon as I got there, I was like, wow, this is this is actually tough as. I struggled big time, eh? I think I was I was diff- I was homesick for a good four or five weeks before I like was fine. Like a every day struggle. I was ringing mum and dad every morning, lunch, afternoon, dinner, every day for four weeks. But um, it was sort of like it was weird as well because I was I was real low. Like I didn't want to be there. I wanted to go home. And then after four weeks, like the next day, it just like clicked. in one day, I was like, oh, I love it here. Like it's real good. And then. I think it was like a couple of weeks. I go home for Christmas. I was sweet. I was like, yeah, a couple of weeks I'll be home. Went home for Christmas, New Year's. Come back again. I was just homesick again. Struggled for weeks. And then after a couple of weeks, I was fine again. But it definitely came and go, come and go. So through the year, I definitely felt I'd come back for a couple of days. I was homesick. You know, I'd be fine again. But once the season started, I was all right. You just you play on the weekend. And then just next week you're getting ready to play again. So mm. yeah, the footy obviously keeps your mind off it when you're actually doing what you're, you know, there to do. Um so with before we touch on the the Black Hawks um side of things, let's just quickly touch on you made a few rep teams, you know, the young the under 18 sides with was it the you made the Murray side at a school as was it under sixteens and the Kiwis as well. I made the New Zealand 16s, I didn't play in the Maori side. No, nah. I think I'm, I could have, but I just didn't play in that. I think but I'm getting um, mixed up with your mate, old Levi. Yeah, Pasco, he played yep. the Maori side. Yeah, he played in that. But I played New Zealand 16s and then New Zealand 18s. When I was a 17 year old, I missed out on that. And then obviously played Junior Kiwis, which was 19s last year. I was an 18 year old. So. How was that? That was right. Yeah, that was cool. Uh, that was real cool. I love that. Yeah, that would have been awesome. What's Central probably Denver. was there a biggest takeaway from that camp? Did you meet any like Kiwi legends or? Um, uh, yeah, Maguire come in. The Kiwis coach he came in and talked to us, so that was pretty cool. Uh, Kevin Proctor presented our jerseys to us, so that was cool as well. And then I think that was it. But um, yeah, just playing it was cool as well coaches pretty good coaches so it was a good crew yeah well going to obviously you know who you've been playing for the Townsville Blackhawks now in that game you're coming up against your housemate um Hamaso and you got oh, a little yeah. bit of a bit of a tussle I did not I'm not going to call it a fight I'm not going to call it anything more it's just a bit of friendly <laughs> banter um yeah. first of all how was it like versing him compared to playing with him I bet you'd prefer playing with him than against him but it's just a no, guess. He's, he's, he's good to play with. But um, it was cool. We played together all year for Blackhawks and we lived together. So I think we found out we both made the team. He found out before me because of the Queensland versus New South Wales tournament. And then um, I was just hoping to get picked so I could piss him. And then I found out it was like a week, week and a half beforehand. So that week, in, that week before we went to camp was, was a bit of sledging going on. But that nah, was pretty cool living with someone and being diverse and representing your country. But that was pretty yeah. awesome watching it and kind of having like obviously um, I don't know Hammer so personally, but knowing you guys have lived together and obviously have been playing together and just seeing that kind of 
banter on the field and now a bit more about the backstory of it was quite cool. Um, yeah, there was this cool. touch on him a bit. Um, a freak, yep. obviously a freakish talent. Like, is there's a certain things you've seen on a footy field, any examples or even at a training pitch where you've just been like, man, this guy's just, you know, oh, he's definitely. a freak. It was, and during preseason, we played like a, um, sort of like a full field touch game, not like two hand touch. And um, one of the boys put a chip kicker and hammer started on the wing and he come through and there was two two boys back because it was like a kick, like kick touch sort of thing. It was really weird. And he just picked it up and just gashed straight through the middle of them. They both just collided. It was, it was pretty cool to watch. Everyone just sort of stopped and was like, wow. Yeah. But um, he definitely is a freak. He's, he's yeah. got some speed behind him. I knew that when he got picked for the nines, I knew we were in for something special. I didn't realise the kicking game was coming to play. I think he scored two tries mm. um, via kicks. And obviously, Cowboys ended up um, running away with it. And he also made, you know, probably did he play about nine, ten games this year or maybe even a bit more? Uh, he played a bit more than that. Yeah. He was 13 or 14. I'm not 100% sure. but Yeah, because Holmes got injured, didn't he? So he filled in a bit yeah, in the callback. Yeah. yeah. So it would be an awesome opportunity for him. Um, but we'll, we'll touch back on you for for a second. Um, yeah, so obviously playing for the Black Hawks, you're happy with the footy you've been displaying, obviously as an individual and a team as well? Uh, yeah, 18s. Was, so last year we played 18s and then moved into 20s when it was finished. And, um, yeah, I think it was all right. Our team, we were minor premiers for the 20s, so... Mm. We had a pretty good team, so that was good. And we just we cut short in the semi final. We lost our semi final, which was a bit of a shame. But um, yeah, I was happy with how I played. I guess it was my first year here, so I sort of just tried to get my feet and see how I went. But yeah, I was pretty happy with that. Yeah, and this so year, like, obviously, it's been a weird year for yeah. any everyone. You know, obviously, everyone knows yeah. the COVID situation. Um, talk about that dynamic and how it's affected just. Your rugby league year. Um, so this year, I was hoping we'd come out of preseason. I was hoping to play some good footy. I was we started. I played round one and under twenties, and then I was hoping to move up to cup for the majority of the year. So that was a big goal of mine to play as many cup games as I can to help me for next year. But obviously, season got cut out at around one, so that was a bit of a shame. I was pretty gutted by that, but um, I got to come home for a bit, see the family, which was good for a couple of weeks, and I was back over here, and the season was cancelled, so yeah, it's a bit of a gutter. Tough. So a lot of training, a lot of time to train, no excuses? <laughs> we got a bit of a time off, but a lot of us boys just keep training, which was good, staying in a group to give us, so that was mm. good. Well, you must have done all right because, like we mentioned at the top, you're now part of the 2021 North Queensland Cowboys side. Um, did you kind of think that was a possibility this year, or do you think that was probably an opportunity that was going to be maybe a year in advance? Or yeah, just talk us through that. Um, talk about the just the different the reaction, how you felt when you, um, you know, found found the news out. Uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. It was um, what I have been told. Most people, I signed it um, last year when I signed my extension. I just okay. didn't really tell okay. anyone that, so sort of kept it in behind bars and then yeah, when it come out, everyone started messaging me. So, yeah, yeah, everyone thinks I've signed it now, which is pretty much the same thing, but no, I did sign it last year. Just kept it hidden, didn't really tell anyone. Oh, interesting. So, yep. Oh, awesome, man. No, that's good. And, um, yeah, we, we're going to finish off with a segment, but just before we get into that, um, so Griffin name in 12 months' time. Um, what would a Griffin name achieve in 12 months' time? Would you be – of um, do you hopefully made your NRL debut? That's definitely something I'm working towards. So, um, I guess – Next year, I'll just try play as good as I can, cup level, and if I get the call up to make my debut, I definitely won't say no. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a goal of mine. But um, 
I'll definitely be walking, working towards it. So we'll just see what happens, I guess. Fingers crossed. Yeah. And as you should have mentioned earlier, hopefully this year, because um, obviously um, you know, but the listeners won't know, we've got good friends up in Townsville, went over there in 2012. And this year we're finally going to go over and hopefully watch you play and catch up with you. But obviously, like we said, been a been a year and a half, to say the least. Um, but hopefully next year, We'll be there watching you making your debut or in your whatever game you're playing. But um, no, it'll be good to finally get over there and you yeah, catch up here. So looking forward to that. I'm looking yeah, forward definitely. to some hot weather too. Oh, it's, it's pretty hot over here, mate. Yeah, and yeah, should we touch on that? What what was it like, you know, adjusting to the to the change in temperature? Uh, it, was, it took a bit to use to it. I remember I just walked straight out of the airport and it just hit me straight away. It was like... It was like walking into a sauna. It was, it was in the summer as well. So I had to do a whole preseason. I was dying, but I'm slowly getting used to it. It's still definitely hot as you talk to the locals here and they're still not used to it. So you get about two weeks of coldish weather in the middle of the year and then it gets real hot again. Yeah, so, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Know. Yeah, I got big memories. I actually remember Ken's was the one that really hit me, went over there. I think a couple of years before I went to Townsville and oh my god. Like I don't know how you can walk like walk walk yeah. around with a shirt on it is tough. But um First yeah, well, we'll tough. Yeah, very tough. So yeah, cheers, Griff. We'll get into the end segment. Now it's called the Legion Lounge. Now basically it's just obviously we're called the rugby league lounge, but basically it's your ideal lounge setting. So First of all, you've got to have some guests, don't you? You're on the lounge, you've got to have some good guests. So, three guests, I want you to name um, a former, you, one of your guests, you've got to have a former or current league player. So, who would you like to kind of chill with in your league lounge? As in chill out with? Or yeah, just chill out. With. Someone maybe, a, what, a guy you like or a guy you think would be a good yarn or... Um, former, like playing now. You can do whoever. You can do former. You can do current. Um, former, I'd probably choose Andrew Johns. I've heard stories about him. Ooh, yeah, good, good yeah, choice. Pretty fun. Yeah, night out with him. Be all right. But um, current, mm, it's probably a few of them actually. Maybe Brandon Smith, Cameron Munster. They seem like they've had some fun. <laughs> the hot topic at the moment, eh? I was talking yeah. to someone the other day about, I think the Melbourne Storm have had the best kind of post-celebration since Andrew John's days, eh? Like, they've just yeah. gone to another I've level. Some fun, yeah. right? oh, mate, it's been good follow. So, we'll say, we'll give you, well, we'll give it them free. We'll make it a pretty um, lofty lounge. I could, check, um, I could pick many people, but... Yeah, yeah. but, yeah, it doesn't even there. What other, an athlete from another sport? Um, four man current. Just, just one or the other. Um, maybe Michael Jordan. Yeah, good choice. And just in the top off the league lounge, this is your last guest, so you got to make it a goodie. Uh, just anyone famous, just someone that you've anyone famous, anyone famous. Hmm, maybe Beyonce. Oh. Good choice, yeah. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> we'll go. Yeah. So yeah, you've got your guest. Um, now you, you're going to be a bit bored, so you're going to have a movie franchise that you got to watch. So, yeah, you can obviously oh. you've got the Harry Potters and all sorts, but what movie franchise are you watching? What's Griffin's uh, favourite movie franchise? I don't mind Star Wars. Yep. But um, if I'm sitting down and want a good movie, I'd either chuck on Step Brothers or Borat. I've been watching Borat early. Nice. I'd chuck either of those two on. Yep. And TV series? Um, TV series. I want to get into Game of Thrones, actually. That's one I just think, do I want to start? Like, do I want to get myself yeah. into it? But I've never, never tried. Yeah. I've had a look at it, but I've just never started it. So I might yeah. start that one day. Fair enough. And, um... You know, you're sick of the movies, you're sick of watching TV, but you just need uh, a few tunes on in the background. What artists do you have on repeat? Oh, um, 
this is a good one. I don't mind a bit of Drake. Um, maybe a bit of Alton John. Oh, yeah. So we've got some good tunes. Mm. A bit of old fashioned, new fashioned. I don't know. I got too many to choose from there. Eh? Yeah, it's tough. But I like the good options. Um, and an activity. So something you can do with them. You can um like an example, play a bit of darts, a bit of pool, you know, any activity. I don't mind golf at the moment, actually. Yep. I want to start going to golf a bit more. Yeah. Get up a driving range in the back of the lounge, all like that. <laughs> um, and to finish off, you you got to have something to eat. So um, what snacks? Probably name maybe one sweet snack and one savoury snack. I don't mind some chocolate, I'd say yeah. that. Um, probably shouldn't have it, but I love it. Bit of KFC. Yeah. Good decision. That's a go-to. And also, and also a drink to make it um, make that KFC go down a bit nicer. A couple uh, beers? Um, yeah, I don't mind a beer. Yeah. Glass of red wine. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> and that's... That's Griffin Neem's Legend Lounge. I'll tell you what, mate, if there's if you got enough room for another guest, I might be joining you for sure. Yeah, yeah, more than welcome. Yeah, awesome. Hey mate, I really appreciate that. Um, thank you for giving me some of your time to talk to you. It's good to catch up with you as well. Yeah, and best of luck for yeah, the year ahead for you. Yeah, cheers, thank you. Awesome.